Marcus Barlow, come to the stage, brother. Thanks. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Leeds. I'm sure it'll be lovely once it's finished. Uh, I'm, I'm from Oldham, which is a, it's a, it's a lovely little town. It's one of the few places in the northwest where you can buy ketamine and boots. Which is, uh, sorry, you can have it as part of the meal deal, that's quite good. Uh, I live in a pretty rough neighbourhood, which is uh, why I was looking to do some self defence courses a few weeks ago, but. Uh, the cheapest one I could find was a jiu-jitsu class, and it was 15 quid a lesson, so obviously I just thought, nah, forget that. And uh, so I bought a gun instead, which <laughs> works out cheaper and is more effective, really. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I was, uh, had a bit of a wonder through uh, Leeds City Centre today, and uh, this girl came up to me with a clipboard. And she said, uh, excuse me, have you got a few moments to talk about rape awareness? And uh, quite ironically, I suppose, I said no, but she continued, I'd said yes. <laughs> she, uh, she just followed me down the street. She, uh, she gave me this little leaflet which said, uh, sex with someone who doesn't want to is raped. And I thought, well, that's nice one to go around letting people know that, because I had no idea. <laughs> I thought rape was when you don't pick your dog shit up. So it's, it's a nice service to do in there. If only, we'd been, if only I'd have got one of those leaflets before I went on my mate's stag do. Could have saved us all a lot of bother. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I actually did, I actually did uh, that's a joke obviously, but I, uh, I actually did go on a stag do a few weeks ago, which was great, but uh, apart from we went to a lap dancing bar, which uh, wasn't really my thing, I'm not into lap dancing bars. It's, I just, uh, I, I just think, if I wanted to pay 20 quid to look at a twat, I'd go watching Michael McIntyre, you know? <laughs> but uh, I think my main gripe with places like that is that um, they sort of perpetuate all those sort of generalisations about men that I don't like. Like, uh, like, people generally say that men are more inclined to cheat on the partners than women, which is bullshit. Because women are just as bad as men. The only difference is women are better at hiding it. <laughs> but like, you know, other blocks are just fucking idiots. Like, whenever a guy cheats on his wife or girlfriend, the first thing he does is go to the pub and tell everyone. Just strolls in, guess who's got chlamydia? <laughs> like, you know, the wife said to bring her something back from Magaluf, so... <laughs> That's not all men, of course, you know, I don't fret, like, if there's any single ladies in. There are genuinely nice guys out there. I'm not saying I'm one of them, I'm just saying. <laughs> No, oh, hang on. I <laughs> <laughs> said, uh, what's, what's next? <laughs> this is the danger of doing new material, folks. You will sometimes just forget exactly what you meant to be saying. Woo! I uh, know. <laughs> Alright, uh, strip giant. Uh, Oh, fuck it, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, what do you say we uh, lighten the mood and talk about uh, child sex trafficking? <laughs> I like the way a couple of you looking at me just to say, all right, we better be fucking good. <laughs> all right, so uh, I only bring it up because there was that story a few weeks ago, uh, that uh, child sex trafficking gang in uh, Rochdale, I think it was, that Asian gang, who were trafficking these young girls for sex, like 13, 14 year old girls, which is of course horrific. But, uh, you know, at least they were giving the girls money, because in the Vatican, kids just have to do it for free, so... <laughs> at least these guys have business ethics, you know? But, like, uh, the, the trial of that was hilarious, because the gang tried saying that the judge was racist, which I found quite funny. Like, uh, that, oh, that judge is well racist, he just wants to send us down because you don't like Muslims. Like, uh, you sure? Not because you've been pimping kids at all. <laughs> Well, maybe a little bit. But like, the, wor the worst thing about a story like that is that it just sort of gives license to racist knobheads to go around starting fights. Because like, you know, whenever a story like that breaks, it's always, there's always like gangs of skinheads meeting up saying, right lads, can we all agree that this is the last straw? Let these bastards run amok in our country for too long. It's time to take affirmative, decisive action. What are we going to do? We're going to smash a fucking bad shot. <laughs> 
And people like that are sort of branded. By the time they get there, they forget what they went, what they actually went for. I just end up getting a kebab anyway. So it's fine. Oh, oh we might be doing something. Uh, oh yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not racist personally, but I've got quite a few friends that are, so I feel it's alright for me to make jokes about them. <laughs> I, uh, I've always wanted to know what the BMP's Christmas party was like. Do like, you think it's just like every other office party, there's always one guy who has a few too many to drink, and ends up telling a really politically correct joke? <laughs> uh, here's one for you lads. This Afro Caribbean gentleman walks into a bar. Whoa, whoa, whoa Steve. We better get you a taxi. <laughs> you know, but uh, of course, if the BNP had to be taken seriously, they probably don't have a Christmas party because, as we all know, Muslims have banned Christmas. <laughs> Makes me laugh when people say that. I wish Muslims would ban Christmas. I've got about like, 10 chocolate fondue sets at home. Never fucking asked for one of them. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't like to bang on about racism when I get all preachy, you know, because ultimately, I don't give a fuck. But, like, there's, there's the other occasion where you do feel like you need to speak out and, like, uh, give you an example. The other day I was on a buzz, um, and there were these, uh, these three uh, young black guys got on, uh, about 15, 16, and this drunken knobhead from the back of the buzz just got up and started, like, just going out and saying, oh, I don't know, fuck off back to Africa, and, just starts getting really aggressive and saying, Come on then, you fucking knobs, I'll fucking do a lot of you. And like, and like I said, they were only 15, 16, so they weren't doing nothing. Everyone on the buzz was just pretending nothing was happening. And I thought, in the end, I just thought, I, That's it, I'll just, I've had enough of this. I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to let this guy incite racial violence. Not on my watch. So I got me gun, I ain't shot the cunt. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm going to have to bring my uh, shit to a close now, because as we all, I'm sh I don't know if you noticed, I forgot some stuff in the middle of this. <laughs> I think I might have got away with it, but just in case, you know. But, uh, you know, thanks for bearing with my shit. I'm, uh, I'm well aware I'm not to everyone's taste. I do have a tendency to take things a bit too far, like... Uh, I made a disabled guy the other night, which was possibly the best blowjob I've ever had. <laughs> so... <laughs> you like one a minute to work its way around the room. Anyway, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, folks. Uh, I know a few of the acts that are on tonight. You're in for a really good night, so uh, thanks a lot. See you later.